Hello, I'm Chris Wozniak and my partner is Sierra Felty. And under the guidance of our faculty mentor, Dr. Christine Small, we conducted a research project that examined the impact of human activity on the density and social behaviors of wildlife at Wildwood Park. And again, the chosen location for our study was Wildwood Park in Radford, Virginia, due to its large variety of habitats, but mostly because it had both remote locations and certain locations that had a considerable amount of foot traffic. And so this was perfect to test our hypotheses, which was number one, would wildlife activity actually decrease in the presence of human activity? And number two, would their social behaviors also change? For example, maybe the herd sizes of deers will be smaller. And uh, for some further info on Wildwood Park, it is a 50 acre plot of land that's mostly dominated by woods that's right next to Rafford, Virginia, which is pictured in the top right. But also the study allowed us to help out the park by giving them access to a better understanding of their biodiversity. So our research methods included setting out Stealth and Simmons wildlife cameras and letting them just keep taking pictures for about six weeks straight. After the six weeks were over, we analyzed photos and looked for trends within them, and we put all of this data and kept track of it in a very large Excel spreadsheet. So this is my partner, Chris. Um, this was him setting up his Stealth wildlife wildlife camera. And this is very similar to where I put my camera. So I put my camera on a hiking trail. And as you'll see later on, that greatly influenced some of the differences in me and Chris's data. And here's an overall picture of Wildwood Park where we set up our cameras. So overall, there was a total of 15 cameras set out. Me and Chris's were some of the ones that were the most far away from the um, residential areas. So 3 and 40 is our cameras, that's our SD cards. And as you can see, it's pretty far away from um, all of the homes up here and it's located within like a brushy type woodland forest. So we got a lot of good wildlife pictures. So this was included just to show the species diversity and the biodiversity within Wildwood Park. And across all 15 cameras, these are some of the species that we caught. So um, this graph shows the variety of species and when they were active. So the birds were mostly active during the day that we caught on our capture events and um, species such as the raccoon and red fox were commonly captured at night. But following along, we identified that there were two main different types of trails at Wildwood Park. Uh, the first being wildlife trails, which we abbreviated WLT, and human hiking trails, which we abbreviated HHT. Uh, we found that on wildlife trails, human activity plummeted with a 97% decrease in foot traffic. Meanwhile, on average, wildlife activity had actually increased by almost two and a half times over. And juvenile wildlife also followed that trend by doubling. Uh, so as we can already see, there is a very big difference between wildlife and human hiking trail environments. So uh, continuing on, we determined those percentages from the last slide by looking at the ratio of capture events that were human or wildlife generated. And as you can see from these graphs, on human hiking trails, a vast majority of capture events were from humans at 88%, meaning only 12% of the remaining capture events that weren't false positives were from wildlife. But uh, compared to the wildlife trails, humans only accounted for 3% of all the capture events meaning wildlife generated the other remaining 97% of capture events. And again, juvenile wildlife also followed those trends, with human hiking trails being even more human dominated. So obviously we can assume that wildlife tend to shy away from human hiking trails and stick primarily to their own wildlife trails. And meanwhile, juveniles are very likely to stick to their own wildlife trails, only rarely being spotted on the human hiking trails. But uh, next we examined the trends of capture events compared to the different hours of the day. And the trends very obviously show an inverse relationship between human and wildlife activity. A large amount of wildlife capture events occurred at around 7 a.m. But later on when humans started to more frequently visit the park at around 10 a.m., wildlife generated capture events began to decrease. But the most dramatic example we have is from 3 to 5 p.m. alone where human activity had almost doubled. Meanwhile, wildlife activity had actually more than halved. 
And again, as humans began to leave the park at around 8 p.m. as they closed, wildlife activity began to pick up once again. And remember how white-tailed deer were equally likely to be spotted at both during the day and the night? Well, this allowed us to compare whether or not the number of capture events generated by the deer at different times of the day would change between trail types, you know, between the different environments of the presence of humans or not. In total, we found that almost 96% of all human capture events were during the day, which according to our previous data would prompt deer to avoid those humans and primarily come out at night. But what we found that on wildlife trails where there's barely any human activity at all, they would primarily come out during the day. Yeah, that's 64.3% of all of our capture events occurring during the day. But again, when we go back to the human hiking trails, 44% of those capture events were during the day, meaning the other 56% were at night. So we can assume that when the human foot traffic was heavy, the deers will be prompted to more come out at night. And on the bottom right, this is a picture from my camera that captured a deer that was plainly just in the middle of the day that was sitting on a wildlife trail. And again, here we were looking at the differences in the um, camera locations on the different trails. And we were interested in the social behaviors and how social behaviors of various species of wildlife were impacted by human activity. So here on the hiking trail, we can see that 86% um, of the capture event saw groups of two. And over here on the wildlife trail, there was 46% of the capture events had groups of three. So that was very rare seeing groups of three on the hiking trail, which makes sense because it's more likely that um, mothers will take their young away from danger, away from human activity. And here we see just that. So this is a white-tailed deer and her two fawns. This is actually one of our favorite pictures. Um, this was on Chris's camera, which was on the wildlife camera. Um, that was located in the more remote area, not the hiking trail. So we saw that the ratio of group sizes of three increased by 328%, and that the average group size from 2.4 to 2.46. So that was an increase as well. So the results of our study we um, initially hypothesized that human activity would impact um, animal activity. And through our results, we found that this was 100% true. So as human activity increased, wildlife activity decreased. And we also found, looking at the social behavior, that groups were larger and more common on the wildlife trail rather than the human hiking trail. Here we have a very cute fox also captured on Chris's camera. And this was captured on my camera. A lot of my um, photos turned out to be of white-tailed deer, which is very surprising considering they're more skittish. But again, um, the wildlife on the human hiking trail tended to be active when humans were nowhere around. So that was not surprising. So for our acknowledgements, we would obviously like to thank Dr. Christine Small for her support throughout this project, along with the Office of Undergraduate Research and Scholarship for providing a virtual platform where we can share our research and findings. We would also like to thank Wildwood Park for allowing us to conduct this research. Chris and I would be very happy to answer any questions you may have, and we thank you for listening.